Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are joining us from. We are thrilled to have you join us today for a webinar that delves into the dynamic and challenging landscape of airport operational management. My name is Rida and I'll be hosting this webinar today. In the rapidly evolving world of aviation, airports face unprecedented complexities. And today we are here to explore how innovative solutions powered by generative AI can transform these challenges into opportunities, fostering operational excellence. It is our pleasure to have TAB Technologies with us today, who will be presenting this webinar titled, Transforming Airports for Operational Excellence and Enhanced Passenger Experience. Now I'll provide some housekeeping information before we start. First of all, please send your questions throughout the webinar and we will allocate some time at the end of the session to address any questions or thoughts that you may have. If your question doesn't get answered today, it will be available to be answered at a later stage. For any related content on the webinar, please click on the widget shown on your screen. And for any tech issues, please click on the help icon. And now please allow me to welcome our speakers, Loic Brian and Talha Koch. Hi Loic, would you like to begin by introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm Loic Briand. I'm working for Group EDP. First, as a grow um, as a managing director for the coordination of the overall expertise of the group on the entire value chain, and uh, for the purpose of today, um, as a head of global PMO of our program Smart Airport, uh, for which I will disclose you some insight in the very next minutes. So basically, I'm representing in this webinar the position of the end users, the airport operators. Talia. Hi, uh, this is Sal Hakoc for MTA Technologies. Uh, I'm working as the head of product management, um, basically responsible from uh, different products in the airport process, including flight management, uh, passenger processing, and particularly digital systems. Okay, so let's start our journey uh, in our digital world. So globally speaking, when it comes to talk to smart airports, uh, this initiative is definitely has been uh, launched in the ADP uh, in 2021. It doesn't mean that we didn't uh, use technology before, but we choose to we chose to threaten our strategy in terms of uh, digital transformation of our operation. Globally, we are talking about 17 airports of the group, uh, mainly the two Parisian platforms, uh, the, the airports of uh, Tab Airport, and also our subsidiary in Jordan and in Croatia. Our this program is structured around what we call five pillars. That means five family of key topics. The first one uh, is a seamless and healthy journey. Obviously, at that time, impacted by the COVID crisis, which explains the terms healthy. Then, definitely, the customer experience. Then, mobility, airfight, and operational monitoring. The overall objective for us as Group ADP and Tav Airports is the first one is to enhance our cl client satisfaction. Client means passengers and also airlines. The second key topic is definitely to improve our operational efficiency and uh, our airport uh, capacity thanks to technology thinks twice before expanding new facilities and trying to optimize what we have obviously uh, in uh, this very competitive world it's to be acknowledged as one of the best in class in terms of smartization and digitalization of the operation and at the end, um, our goal is to improve our leadership and influence locally in each of the airports that we are running. Um, as I said, uh, here has a screen, so you see, uh, sorry, you see perfectly the, the family of, um, of topics. So the first one, we will deep dive definitely, sorry, there is a bug. Uh, um, will deep dive into smart check-in, smart security, and uh, um, and um, wayfinding and flight information display. The second one will be universal customer experience. 
in which we will find how our hospitality division strengthens the relationship with our customer, providing them with an extraordinary experience during their journey in our terminals. And we will focus mostly today on those two families as topics. To run, um, I would say, this program, definitely we settled um, a strong and robust governance involving under uh, the management of a steering, a steering committee composed by our ex-com members of both group. I would say on the left-hand side, I would say what we call the business line, it means all the expert division supporting the program in which we find mainly operation, IT, sustainable development, innovation, and uh, airport capacity to the benefit of who of the participating airport. It's really something on which we insist. Uh, each airport is a decision maker. He has the key of the future and every solution that we will display later on in this program uh, has a, needs to get a sense. It means we don't digitalize for cosmetics, but we digitalize our operation and customer experience for a purpose. Um, this is illustrating exactly what I said. The methodology, uh, the method used is composed by seven steps. First, uh, the initial phase run in 2021 and early 2022 was to understand each other and what was the issues, the hot topics, the challenges and the needs of each participating airport. All those needs were consolidated, and we tried to figure out what could be the ambition uh, globally at the, at the global level in our group. And this is how, at the end, we define um, the smart airport KPI in our strategic plan of the group. Right after that, uh, the moment came in defining roadmaps absolutely tailor-made to each different airport partners in the program, definitely to try to anticipate as much as we can what could be the risk and the opportunities. And deployment is a key word. Indeed, our group and ambition is not to be a giant lab only, but when a solution serves our needs, is to deploy and industrialize everything that we do for the purpose that I announced at the very beginning of the presentation, mainly enhancing our customer satisfaction and experience and enhancing the operation efficiency. Globally speaking, if we have to deep dive about which topic we could find, I would say when we talk about seamless and healthy journey, uh, it's composed by all the milestones that uh, our customer, our passenger, will have to pass through during their journey in our airports. So we are talking basically about smart checking in which we find some components that some of you already know very well. It means uh, self-service kiosks, self-backdrops, biometrics, for the most advanced airport, um, smart boarding. It means once you have been recognized by the technology, no need anymore to go uh, to, to, to present papers and ID cards. Smart border, definitely in strong relationship with the authorities to enhance and speed the control of our borders. Uh, smart access, um, definitely when it comes to regulate the flows through documentation check on a digital way. Smart check-in, because this is the future uh, in which we find definitely new ways of monitoring the flows to that uh, milestones, key milestones in the journey. All in that, definitely, it's to better understand what happens in uh, our boxes, it means our airports, in terms of flow management, in terms also of remote process. It's try to anticipate as much as we can what the, would be the behavior of our customer in our infrastructure. 
definitely we are also responsible and um, we pay a peculiar attention to the way that we are welcoming passengers with reduced mobility and all in all is to make their journey through wayfinding and information display as smooth as possible. When we go to uh, take an example, I think one of the most visible for the public is a way that we are digitalizing, I would say, um, the checking process. Definitely, uh, it's not only putting technology in front of the check-in countries or replace them. The first thing is to align with our partner and to align, uh, especially with ground handlers and airlines, to make sure that they adopt uh, and we are aligned in the use and the targeted efficiency of such implementation. For that, generally speaking, we select a bundle of airlines which are more digitalized than others, try to run the early processes of testing, I would say, the smart check-in, and then after that to onboard the rest of the airlines on the airport. Definitely uh, uh, in the digitalization, you need to find a win-win agreement. It means not the airport only on the standalone basis, digitalizing its operation, but what could be the advantage definitely for the airline. And it turns rapidly to talk about money, to talk about reducing their OPEX, especially on the way, uh, on the way that they are renting some space for check-in, but also to try to optimize their staff dedicated to these milestones and at the end, uh, to uh, enhance their own operational efficiency in the system. On that, definitely, we use some leverages in terms of commercial approach to make them accept more easily from a technical, commercial, and operational perspective. Um, customer benefits, if I have to summarize what could be for them the benefit of a smartization of the checking process, is just is the same as ours, is to improve their customer experience. Uh, it's also transforming the role of our agents in the terminals, passing from classic checking agents to reassuring and welcoming agents. Uh, the target for them also is to reduce the waiting time, which has a direct impact on OTP and punctuality, and also to um, capitalize on the autonomy as a service offering. Um, as I said, for airlines, um, improving uh, operational performance is a key represent, decreasing the cost, uh, and also managing uh, traffic increase uh, with the same level of resources directly linked uh, to uh, the topic of airport capacity behind. To run that, uh, it's a kind of matricial organization uh, with specialists from IT, but also from operation to remap entirely uh, the processes in our airports. It's redesigning their operation and also with all the data generated to be in a position to better monitor the performance uh, of our operation and of, of the and also the operation of our partners. Deep diving a little more. So here you see that definitely when you start to digitalize the package handling you are more aware about the number of bytes, uh, I would say, and the performance of the overall baggage handling system. We have bad drops, is better vision about the frequentation, the typologies of passenger and the habits on such and such routes. Queuing definitely is to better anticipate some to technology like LIDAR, like Zovis, or some sensors developed by TAP technology 
how I would say our customers are behaving and try to reorganize to make their journey even smoother, even greater, and to let them, I would say, sufficient time to enjoy the journey and benefit for us for the dwell time. All of those data, as I said, is uh, perfectly managed through uh, the creation of new airport database, ENANS, which led us to better know, better anticipate the flows. And I think that Talha will expose you in the second part of this presentation what we could do with the total airport management system. Um, here is an illustration about the ramp up uh, in CDG, how we convince the airline to switch from one step, classical step of check-in to two, to two step. It means first the customer stops by the self-serving kiosk and going to the self-backdrop and how thanks to a commercial strategy, but also showing the benefit of the digitalization, how could they improve their operation and this tremendous rate of adoption of new technologies. When it comes to customer experience, and we call it universal because definitely we, our, our mentor is not to say what we do in Paris or in Ankara shall be copy pasted in every airport without sense. Definitely universal because we have a very multi-local approach, even though I would say the component of our strategy remains the same. When it comes to customer experience, we are talking in digitalization. Uh, the key components that we are digging on and developing are first the loyalty program and in Paris with our program X Time Rewards. Also the ways that we are better know and interact with the customers through an enhanced CRM. Definitely the ways that we are promoting, pushing and enabling purchasing with the marketplace, then uh, obviously uh, it's, it's, this can only happen with a strong Wi-Fi infrastructure in our terminal. When it comes to uh, a digitalized ex um, experience, so here you have as a screen uh, our brand, XTime, and the digital ecosystem components. Three of it, as I mentioned, first, XTime Rewards as a loyalty program. The second thing is XTime Marketplace, which is an e-commerce solution. And finally, the XTime Data Hub, which will enable our commercial team to better uh, know uh, our customer, uh, fine tune and enhance the commercial offer to make sure that any one of our customer will have almost a tailor-made journey in our airports, responding to their needs. As regards the airport loyalty program, X Time Rewards, so basically it's accessible through mobile device and corporate website Paris Aéroport. Um, it's absolutely a um, consolidated and integrated environment in which definitely uh, the customers can interact with all the service offer which is present in the terminal and can uh, spend earned mice and burn them uh, during its journey. Today, uh, we are proud to announce that uh, we have uh, 2.7 million members in Paris to this program. When it comes to uh, e-commerce solutions, so definitely is to uh, make this smooth as much as possible, and also for the customer to anticipate any needs of purchase that he would like to do either directly or at the airport or in advance through the mobile app and trying obviously to uh, to get uh, his purchasing when arriving at the airport thanks to click and collect. It's a very interactive 
app in which definitely the customer might ask, I would say, every single needs that you could have during a stay. Behind that, this is the engine, the engine of our commercial team. It means, as I expressed all obvious, uh, before, uh, all those digital solutions serve us to better understand um, the habits of our customer, what they want, what they are willing to find, spend, uh, and experience in our airports, and trying through those uh, enhanced data platform, I would say, to anticipate and to be absolutely correlated with the evolution of their needs. I think that's all from my side. Uh, I will be more than happy to answer your questions after Talha's presentation. So let's move to AI. Talha, the floor is yours. Thank you, Loic. Great insights about the um, digital transformation program uh, that is happening within the ADP group. Uh, you have shown, you, shown us lots of digital tools in different areas. And in my presentation, I will be trying to go into the down the rabbit hole of the uh, artificial intelligence and in particular generative AI. And of course, the technology itself uh, is not important. It's the key point here is to make it available for the business and to make the airport management processes uh, much more efficiently. Before starting my um, before going into the details, I would like to talk about the market outlook of generative AI. Um, generative AI, as we all know, is shaping our lives and our workplaces. And every day, it is penetrating our daily habits. We are using ChatGPT and other kind of derivatives in our lives. And when we look into the uh, research of the Bloomberg, we see that the market is going to have a compounding growth rate of 42%, which is really a big value. And within 10 years, we are going to see a huge market like $1.3 trillion in the next 10 years. So this is the potential of the technology itself. But when we think about the business, how this technology is going to affect us, we can look at the uh, research on the right side, which, is, uh, which was carried out by McKinsey. So uh, in this graph, you can see some blue dots, which are particularly showing where we can get the most impact out of the generative AI. So here are some of the functions in any corporate we can see is sales, marketing, software engineering, and customer operations. So when we think of the airports, customer operations is, is in particular interest. And by touching only not all of the functions, but in just some areas, we can really increase uh, the productivity. Uh, and by this increase in the productivity, uh, we can, it is estimated that uh, we can generate around 2.6 trillions up to uh, 4.4 trillion dollars productivity boost. So this is really a huge number in that sense. So when talking about the use cases in the airport uh, ecosystem, uh, we should first think, of course, about the passenger experience because as airports, this is what we think uh, in our to-do list. That's in the first line. So we would like to make the journey seamless uh, as, as much as possible. Uh, and the journey not only starts at the airport, but it starts at home. And we are trying to create a really personalized passenger experience uh, to meet the specific needs of our customers. So this starts like uh, booking a trip and traveling to the airport, right? Then passing through the terminal and then going into the retail and food and beverage and duty-free offerings until you go to the aircraft. So on all of these points, generative AI has a huge potential to play. 
So I would like to show you just some of the examples where the generative AI might be useful. So it is uh, imperative that uh, when you go to an airport, flight information is the key. So I need to know exactly what's going on. And I would like to be informed about these changes and updates. The second thing is about to find my way within a big terminal. I need to navigate. And uh, if somebody can, if a digital tool can help me on that, I would be very happy. Also, the waiting times and crowd information is very critical if the airport is too large. There might be some options to take better routes, better options within the airport so that I can avoid uh, crowds in the airport. Another important point is particularly maybe the most painful part of the passenger experience is security and safety parts. So when you go through the security, you usually don't know exactly which items uh, you can pass through there. And in every airport, you might have a different kind of experience. And finally, um, as a part of the journey, of course, passenger has its own journey. The baggage has its own journey. And we really would like to know what's happening to my luggage after I pass that through the check-in point. For that sense, all of the airports all around the world try to provide some services in different forms with the mobile applications. Uh, so here we see some examples, for example, uh, the Melbourne airport providing information about the flights via a mobile application. In the Haneda example, we see that it can also provide public transportation information uh, over a chatbot. And on the right side, uh, in Changi, Changi Airport, we see that uh, they are trying to give information about the baggage, particularly by itself. So all of these attempts are more traditional ways of uh, touching the passenger journey. But with the generative AI, we can make it much more personalized. Another area in interest is, of course, our experience when it comes to the retail and premium services. So the airport shopping experience is a very key topic. Similarly, food and beverage, and also the premium services like meet and assist, fast track, lounges, uh, valet and car park. Also, as Loic has indicated, the loyalty program itself is very critical to create a customized experience for the passengers. So I would like to show you uh, our vision when the generative AI comes into the play. So I will try to show you one video and uh, explain what the generative AI brings into our lives. So. Uh, what we imagine for our customers is to manage all of their um, service requirements within the airport. So there is an, we, we are imagining an AI companion uh, and we are going to not only ask some questions and get answers, but instead we will, similar to a representative, we will talk with him and tell that, okay, I have a flight from Roma airport to Adnan Menderes Izmir airport. And I would like to benefit from some services like meet and assist or car park. And it is going to give some answers to me and it will direct me to immediately for the reservation of these services. So I will tell them, uh, tell the AI assistant which, which kind of particular services I would like to, to have. And it is going to offer me, it is going to offer intelligent recommendations to me, including these res reservations about the meet and assist, lounge, car park, and even the retail. Let's imagine in a scenario where I want to also buy some items or gifts for relatives, then it is going to give me some recommendations, as you can see also in the video as well. So our AI assistant here is offering some items like a watch, and a shoe depending on my input to the system. So after this conversation, uh, which is very natural and it feels like a real human is helping me, I can add those items to my shopping cart. And similar to purchasing something from, um, you know, the global 
uh, retail companies like Amazon. We would like to create the same feeling in that sense. And when I go to into, into my shopping cart, the recommendations are still there and it will help me to check out. And also as a part of the loyalty program, it is going to give some benefits to me. And finally, it's going to create a QR code and provide a seamless shopping journey. So another part is airport operations. So until now, we have talked about the passenger journey, but it is also very critical to change things on the operational side. Usually the operational systems are uh, kind of not seen by the passengers itself, but it is needed to uh, for the airport to work like a clock, okay? So as TAV technologies, uh, we are heavily investing also into the AI, and particularly the generative AI. And this is going to shape um, the functionality of the airport management systems in itself. So I would like to show you one example about what we mean when the generative AI comes into the play. So in the screen now, you see our AODB, Airport Operational Database Application. So when I uh, use the artificial intelligence component within that application, it starts with giving a summary of the day. How many flights are there? Um, what, it, what are, which airlines are now flying uh, today into my airport? So it is summarizing statistical information for me. So in the morning, I would like to check that information when I'm drinking my coffee. And if I would like to go into the details, of course, everything is connected to each other and I can go easily into the details of that particular flight or that particular statistics. And I can also get into, the, into a conversation with the AI. I can ask specific question. I can ask, how can I do, uh, how can I add a delay to a flight? And it's going to help me and give some help information but it can also get some comments from me as well. So I, in a conversational form, I can tell that, okay, can you add the following delay to that particular flight? And it is going to ask me and validate, are you sure you would like to add that delay? And after confirming that, it is going to do that operation in behalf of me. So this is what the generative AI will bring to the airport management systems. It is going to augment the operator itself. It's not going to entirely replace it, but it will help the people, our staff in the airports to, the, to do uh, their job in a much more efficient way. Another example is about the reporting insights, um, the uh, management information systems. We all like reports, right? We all like pie charts, etc. But usually it takes time to get those pie charts and the reports. Would it be nice if I can just ask questions to those reporting platforms in a natural language format? Can you bring me the total number of uh, Turkish airline flight passengers within one month? So I don't need to write some specific Excel formulas or etc. But instead I write questions similar to asking a question to a person. And it is going to completely in the background, create a report and bring it to you, as you can see now in the screen. I don't need the Excel. I don't need uh, detailed technical information. What I need is just the business information. So as a business user, I can ask those questions and get the reports and graphics uh, by just some simple queries. Another area of the artificial intelligence is when we try to predict something. Particularly in TAV technologies, we invest in this area because we really would like to understand what's happening within the terminal. Because as airport managers, we would like to predict the future and understand how many passengers will be in the terminal, uh, where, where will be the crowds, and where will be the bottlenecks so that we can take necessary actions to solve those problems before happening. 
So in this example, you can see that our models and systems can predict what's happening tomorrow and what is the uh, possibility of having peak times in the airports. And here I can also get into the conversation with the application itself uh, by using uh, generative AI functionality and creating natural, uh, natural language queries. Okay, so uh, all of these things looks nice. It's shiny, uh, but what is the cost behind it? Okay, so as an airport, I would like to know what is waiting, uh, what, uh, what is the financial cost of this? So uh, this is a really, really interesting question because when we are talking about the generative AI, this can take uh, a few hundred of dollars, but also it can take uh, hundred thousands of dollars as well. So um, in that sense, we need to really understand what the requirement is. So instead of attacking to all of the problems in the report, we need to really define the business case we really need to define the problem and we need to create a tailored solution for that particular problem. So uh, there are different kinds of parameters uh, after understanding the project requirements. Do we would like to do that on cloud or do we are we going to do that on premise? So this is a very critical information in terms of the investments. And we need to also understand that if you would like to go into an on-premise solution, then you need to, of course, have people to support those systems in, by hiring in-house talent or maybe by outsourcing that to the third parties. So this is also very critical. I would like to show some key parameters, like if you, if you would like to train a model similar to ChatGPT, what do I need? That might take millions of dollars, as you can see on the top example. But uh, what if, if I would like to just have a small uh, on-premise system to you know, buy a hardware and start to run things? Then you might maybe start with the $10,000 server in the background. What if, if you don't want to invest in any kind of hardware, but just go to the cloud, then maybe, uh, that can cost you up to $4 per hour. So different requirements, different investment schemes. And finally, um, when we talk about the generative AI, it would be really uh, key to talk about the ethics and governance. And in order to establish those policies, uh, we need to talk about some serious matters here. So how can our Mm, employees can reap the best benefit out of the AI. So we need to define clear policies uh, to make it clear what is the safe generative AI use. So we need to really talk about it, think about the safe generative AI use. In order to do that, we also need to think about uh, whether we would like to own the data or protect our data. You might have some different use cases in your airport where there is no detailed or uh, private data. So you can be very comfortable to go out to uh, public services. But if there is some secure data, some private data, you need to be very careful in uh, protecting that data. And also, uh, when you are dealing with the chat GPT kind of generative AI applications, you ask questions, right? And those questions itself is actually the input to the system. So that is the information pieces that you give to that giant uh, artificial in intelligence engine. And that might include some serious information about your corporate, about the business, etc. So you can't be so comfortable in sharing that data. And you need to uh, clearly teach and train your employees about the safe uh, generative AI usage. And the final part is to be skeptical about the generative AI usage. So a healthy skepticism is very critical and we should encourage our staff 
uh, about the AI usage, uh, about how this data is shared. Where is this data stored? Is my data is becoming publicly available? So this kind of awareness is critical when we are playing with that shiny technology of generative AI in the corporate world. So uh, thank you very much. Um, I will be glad to uh, get the questions on the generative AI. And also I would like to give the floor to my uh, colleague as well, because there might be questions uh, on the first part of the presentation. Yep, so thank you very much for the presentation. And it does look like we have some questions coming in already. So the first question we can see that has come in is, how long do you think AI applications in airport domain will become commonplace? Okay, I think that question is to me. So um, the answer to that is now. So there is no more time. We don't need to wait anymore. Uh, because it's happening already. So the chat GPT is there, the technology is there, and all of the vendors are now implementing those solutions. So I can tell that within, within a year, or maybe within a few months, we will see all of the airport applications uh, starting to be equipped with features using the generative AI capability. Okay, another question we have in is, do you think the cost as of today is feasible for AI applications or will this reduce in the future? Okay, um, that's a really good question. And I have also given uh, information in my slides about that because that's what everybody's asking. That is nice, but how can I incorporate that technology into my ecosystem? Um, as you can see, for example, uh, the Open AI initiative, which is uh, the company behind the chat GPT, uh, is forcing the industry with its own solution. And other players in the market have problem in responding to that. All of, uh, all of the people uh, are asking about why can't, for example, Google give an answer to that? Uh, this is basically about the cost. It is still not fully viable uh, to provide it publicly, but it's, it is just a matter of time uh, before that critical point uh, is exceeded. So uh, you don't need to do really big investments, like similar to the chat GPT, but you can focus on smaller uh, scope of problems and in that case, you can really uh, reduce the cost in that area. And I believe within a couple of years, uh, we will see huge reductions in terms of the cost because hardware companies like AMD, NVIDIA is hugely investing in this area to make it um, much more feasible and cheaper. Great. Another question we have is how AI is going to support baggage tracking, and do they really reduce short shipments? Uh, okay, that's also a good question. I mean, um, maybe not only about the generative AI, but we can go a little bit f further uh, and include all of the AI topics within the baggage ecosystem. We see lots of initiatives, initiatives in the market that are trying to, for example, understand and label the baggage without the need of a barcode. So as we can, for example, like similar to the biometric technologies, we can understand who is who, right? So that technology is there. And some initiatives, for example, are working on the biometrics of the baggage itself. So this is a really interesting and transformative technology uh, that people are uh, working on. And there are also lots of prediction related capabilities in the baggage area as well, trying to understand uh, the lost luggage parameters and statistics. And also they are trying to predict, for example, the passenger journey timeline within the airport ecosystem, starting from checking counter, going to the BHS baggage handling system up to the aircraft. 
And we can really predict those timelines by using the uh, AI capabilities. And regarding the generative AI, I have also given an explanation on that in my slides. It's usually a conversational type of uh, interactivity where I would like to get more information about what's happening to my luggage, where is it? And when I'm going to um, receive my baggage in the carousel area, because if it's 15 minutes, maybe I can go to, to the duty-free area, I can go to the restroom, etc. So all of these things are uh, happening now around the baggage ecosystem. Okay, great. So do you, another question is, do you use blockchain architecture in integrations? And do you have any preparations for the use of EVATOLTS at airports? Okay, uh, I will try to answer the half of that question and also uh, try to direct it to Loic because ADP has serious investment in the EVATOL part. Um, Loic, would you like to start? at that part and give information about the VTOL and the initiatives on the ATP. <clears throat> so VTOL for the moment, it, um, yeah, it's a little on the side of smart airport, definitely, because it's an alternative transportation solution for us. Um, the first challenge in which um, ADP was positioning this, trying to figure out how to welcome those alternative modes of transportation, not only in our airports, but on, also in the city. Uh, and we started to deep dive about an infrastructure on that game and try to define what could be, from an infrastructure perspective, uh, what could be, I would say, a veto station either on the, on the inside the airport and then after that in the city. Saying that, VTOL is a key uh, challenge for us because uh, we are collaborating strongly with French civil aviation because those uh, the routes and the equipment shall be certified. So it requires a strong collaboration between uh, airport operators, manufacturers of VTOL, and civil aviation for the routes. Uh, here also, I think we are leaders uh, because uh, our ambition definitely is to have our first VTOL for the Olympic Games during, during this year in yeah. 2024. And we started obviously to start to give some consulting services on those uh, on, on that topic of VTOL in Asia and Middle East. Yeah, also regarding the first part of the question, was it was about the blockchain. Uh, so the blockchain uh, was like a hype technology two or three years ago, and many of the parties have uh, tried to use that technology for the to check what it means for the integrations and data sharing. And many vendors tried different POCs and initiatives uh, without the concrete result or output in our market yet. Uh, I see the blockchain similar to the metaverse hype, uh, where there is the initial cycle of hype, which everybody is talking about the technology like a silver bullet. Then it goes down. People try to understand what it really means. Then in the second cycle, they really try to find the right uh, solutions and the right problems for that. For the airport ecosystem, uh, we have not seen any concrete example on that yet. This is what I can see. But I believe that every technology has its time and the time has not come yet. I believe we have another question for Loic, actually. And that is, what is the primary advantage of global engagement for a group like ADP? and TAV in the context of digitalization. Within the group, what is the underlying reason for embracing digitalization in operations? Well, I think that we are, uh, as I mentioned during, uh, during my initial speech, I would say we are playing smart, not for cosmetic, but for purpose, it means. And as an airport operator, there is two key drivers, the way that we are optimizing, enhancing our offer operation 
from a performance perspective and uh, from a financial perspective. And every solution on which we can decrease for ourselves or for our partner, the level of OPEX in our airport is relevant. The second thing is in this very competitive world of airport industry, I would say we are all running uh, to get, I would say, uh, the maximum customer satisfaction. And I must say that ADP and TARB are pretty good on that uh, uh, in reference with the last awards that we receive in terms of customer satisfaction, whatever we are talking about, Skytrax and ASQ. But yes, it's really doing on purpose. And I think that one of the key elements developed by X-Time ADP uh, in the way that we try really to understand the needs, the will, the dreams of our customer while liaising into a digital eco ecosystem is to create a very intimate relationship in which we can accompany them, simplify their lives during the journey. And at the end, the airport journey is no more, I would say, a painful experience. It needs to, work, to wait just an aircraft. But you can work, you can have fun, you can have meal, you can um, uh, buy a gift, but everything's super connected as if I would say we ADP or TAF, we were knowing in a in depth the will of our customers. So it's really, really, I would say the, the primary advantage of engagement into a digitalization, um, digitalization uh, strategy. Okay, great. So how specifically does any investment in digitalization contribute to improvements in customer experience and operational performance or financial outcomes, for example? So uh, definitely, once again, the motto is we do it on purpose. Each time that we are trying a new, uh, a new solution, a new technology, the first key, the first very first step is to try first to make sure that this technology is uh, answering the needs of our airports. The second thing is to run and to build a comprehensive use case. And I think that the demonstration from Talha is perfectly illustrating that. It means what are the initial needs, what we want to achieve, what enable the, the, um, the technology is uh, providing us with, and at the end, how much it cost. And you need to compare how much it costs with the added, uh, the added value. The added value can take various form. It could be a savings in terms of OPEX. It could be an increase of your non routing call revenues. X time is a perfect illustration as a commercial weapons, let's say. So this is, and having, I would say, a use case which is really formatted on which we can justify towards our respective governance, the interest to invest in such or such technology and tools is just not cosmetics, but bring added value on that. And the strong, the strength of that group, I would say, is not to keep the use case internally in CDG only or Almaty at the end. Definitely, our um, our motto is to share with our ecosystem, and when something is relevant, is to spread the great news to all others and to see if it could be adequate to uh, Amman, to Zagreb, or to Almaty, which is answering, I would say, another question in the chat from someone from Almaty, uh, do we envisage, I would say, to play smart with a new terminal in Kazakhstan? The answer is yes. We did it. We started as we do initially, is to start to understand what will be the operation of such new terminal, what are the ambition for Ala team and Tab Airport on that, and try to figure out which kind of solution digitalization we will implement 
in this brand new ecosystem. We've got a question here about AI again as well. So can AI be used to pre-screen passengers before they even arrive at the airport? And on that way, it will reduce waiting time on security screening. Okay, uh, that's an interesting question as well. Um, for example, we know some initiatives uh, that applies AI functionality in uh, pre-screening as well as, uh, ad this is what we call admissibility as well. So, you know, as of today, lots of uh, checks are done manually. So usually the airport staff, if a passenger wants to travel from one country to another, they need to check things and rules and regulations manually by using some software as well. But these are kind of static tools which depend on some people working in the background to uh, analyze the data and the content uh, of different governments, etc. So the AI can be used there as well. So you can get and source that information and automate it and bring the uh, most key and updated information because there are hundreds of uh, countries in the world and they change regulations, etc. And finally, uh, you don't know where they exactly publish that. So there is no single central source of data where you can go and check, okay, what is the rule he here in here? Uh, as TAV Technologies, uh, we are a, a platform provider for the check-in systems. Like this is what we call COPS. And within the COPS platform, we can also provide, a, for example, a DCS, which we call local DCS. And within that application, uh, usually it is known as, for example, the thematic to, uh, to check this admissibility type of information. Uh, we are trying to, instead of that, use artificial intelligence-based solutions uh, in our lo local DCS. For example, my team is now uh, working on that uh, with a third-party company uh, to enhance the experience in terms of pre-screening, admissibility, etc. Uh, so most probably you are going to hear from TAV Technologies soon uh, about that as well. We can also uh, tell you that uh, this year we will be in Passenger Terminal Expo in Frankfurt in April. So uh, I would like to invite you to see about what's happening in the AI, AI uh, area uh, and visit our booth. Thank you. And just um, a final question before we come to the end of our session. Uh, could you please give more details about biometric use cases to manage security in airport management and passenger processing? So actually, we haven't already used biometrics on security because uh, we are using biometrics uh, in uh, the press in the sev in several milestones of the passenger journey, so we are experiencing it in a smart uh, check-in and smart boarding. Uh, we are using it in Paris in in some of our airport in border controls. Uh, that for sure. For security, not for the moment, I would say, because it's linked obviously to some with uh, some interaction with the ministries of interiors or any ministry in charge, I would say, of security. So I'm not saying that it won't come in the future, because if you see the big picture, if you start to digitalize um and to use biometrics from checking to board to boarding what will be the future i'm pretty sure that we will also address these milestones in the future Uh, 
I think we have a connectivity issue, right? Sorry, I lost, I lost, uh, I lost the sound for a few seconds. Is it okay? Hello. Yeah, it's yeah. okay now. We can hear you. Yeah. yeah. So I was just saying thank you a lot for your questions, and I'd like to thank Loic and Telha for this presentation, and Tab Technologies for sponsoring this webinar. And any unanswered questions will be answered at a later date. Uh, and to the attendees, you will receive an email telling you how you can access the on-demand version of this webinar, or you can access this through our website, which is www.arena-international.com. And we look forward to sharing future webinars with you. So please do keep an eye out on the website just mentioned. And thank you once again for attending, and we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, and see you at the Passenger Terminal Expo.